This way, towards me, underneath. Oh, you're not in the camera. You're not in the camera. And move it closer towards me. Like right there. That's good. Oh, that's way too close. <laughs> Back up. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Perfect. Wait, wait. I'm you can move that, that one. Way. Yeah, turn that one that way. Yeah. Yeah. Just move that one forward. Then. Pretty much even with the camera. And then turn it towards it. There. That's good. <laughs> it's like we've never done this before. Yeah. <laughs> the gallery keeps changing the host. Um, I called my family and said, Hey, do you want pizza? No, we already got some. Uh, oh, this is really good. Is that one of the circles? Huh? Is that one of the circles? No, this is the new camera. It just came in. There is a blue light on the camera? Yes. Okay. We'll give it. Well, the blue light would have to be on. Or is that for the, for the mic? The mic. <laughs> What do you laugh, people? It's trying to like prove it. I know. They're still under market already. 57? Yeah. Total sells it for 67. Really? The double oak? But they can't bid on sell under market. Oh. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Here we are again. Here we are again. 55. 55. Episode 55. Woo. Thanks for uh, joining us for episode 55 of the Bariks Coffee, Wine, and Treat show. The show that we never thought we'd still be doing 55 episodes <laughs> later. In fact, we have, we've dealt well, we've, of course, we've turned the year clock. But I'm starting to run into, as I'm getting re these things ready, I never use the year when I code things and this 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 day last year we were featuring the uh, oh goodness gracious I'm gonna drop like oh the the juggernaut cab oh and um, cabernet or the uh, pinot that begins with a b um, not not uh, Vavasur, but um, Vayner or um, oh Varner 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 oh. pinot <laughs> pretty crazy. Uh, everything that we talk about tonight, because the whole objective of this whole thing when we got started back uh, a little over a year ago was to sell some stuff. So we're going to sell some stuff tonight. It's all out there and available for sale at breeksmarket.com under events and CWT. You can see everything that we're going to talk about. So if you get tired of listening to us, you can still get the deals by purchasing actually everything but one thing, the last thing we're going to talk about tonight. I will tell you next week, you have to pay attention. Because the opportunity is only if you watch. Oh, the uh, coffee. Yeah. The coffee, the Burundi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. So let's get talking about the wine of the week. So every week we do a wine deal uh, to our email group and then we talk about it Wednesday night. And every Wednesday night we get some pizza and we drink most of the wine deal. <laughs> and then maybe another one. And then maybe another one. Uh, it's. Rosé, or getting to be rosé season, you wouldn't know it by like the hardcore snowflakes that were flying when I was driving around today. Ooh. Ooh. I drove across the north side of the lake this morning. It was like, I was going to film it because it was like literally a white out. Oh, 100%. It was, it was so heavy duty. Yeah. So why not talk about rosé? Mary <laughs> uh, Taylor uh, is uh, a woman who we had host, co-host a tasting with us. A bunch of months ago, September-ish, I think, something like that. It was uh, the day uh, uh, Ruth, uh, the Supreme Court oh, justice, passed away. RBG, been, yeah, RBG. Died. Yeah, that's right. Um, and uh, she's really interesting. Like, you know, you talk about like typical wine careers. I'm going to go be a winemaker, or I get involved with wine sales, or uh, you know, a winery owner. She is like this kind of quasi amalgamation of sort of all those things. We don't even really know what to call her. Well, I actually, I just found out that she's gone one step beyond where, you know, she was restaurateur, you know, restaurant wine list, buyer, 
going into working in, in uh, retail stores, going to wholesalers, creating your own brand. And I was thinking like, oh yeah, you're trying to develop the American market. I think she has like seven new markets that like countries, the, countries like yeah. Europe and like where she's selling her label mm. and people are in love with what she does because it's great stuff at a great price. And, and I think the, the other thing that was very clear when we spoke to her, like super hands on with yeah. the product and, well, the, and, the, and, the, and the growers and vintners. Yeah, and when I talk to our sales guy about her, she answers the phone. It isn't like you get like an office person or she's traveling and I get back to whatever. You call the number and she picks up and like, oh yeah, like when I called her, she's like, oh yeah, I'm just got back. I got poison ivy. I'm trying to like put put stuff on my poison ivy. And I was just like, what? Wow. <laughs> I'm calling you to talk about wine, but yeah. We're gonna talk about poison ivy. Yeah. Let's That's not true. talk about poison ivy. No. Uh, how did you pronounce this? Ajene. Ajene. Ajene Rose made by um, a guy named Christopher is it Abi. 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 Is the uh, the guy who grows the grapes, the winemaker. Christoph, so, actually. Probably. Christoph, yeah. yeah. So she'll partner with uh, these small producers, uh, put these under kind of her label. Uh, all wines that are very, I mean, like like 100% terroir driven to a very, like very small locales, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so this is upper uh, Garonne uh, and Dargonne rivers, up above Bordeaux uh, is where this rosé comes from. And this is all indigenous Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc. And we were saying, I mean, you can kind of kind of tell <laughs> that it is insanely drinkable. Yeah, it, it, it really is kind of that perfect, nice level of acidity, dryness, great fruit, just drinks well. It, yeah, I would, I would, like, you can kind of tell from the color. It's like you might think that it might be a little too dry because it's pretty salmony. Yeah. You know, not not too pink, uh, but it is not sweet. It's no. not too bone dry. It does. It's the gulpable kind of rosé that you'd want. And the deal price at eight ninety nine, I mean, is ridiculous. Yeah. For for a wine of this quality, typically retailing for ten ninety nine, so you get a couple dollar discount on that. Um, I mean, yeah. this stuff is awesome. Yeah, and they don't hide, you know, it's a, it's a clear bottle, so there's no hiding what the color is like. And Yeah. So. And the, the I mean, this the varietal composition is a little unusual. Like, we don't, we don't often see Cabernet-dominated rosés. No. And that's pretty no. rare. And I think that's what get. I, I mean, that's maybe the why I like it. Because it has, I don't know, some rosé doesn't have enough heft in the palate. And maybe it's because it's too acidic. And then there's obviously others that are just hit the two sweet note. This is just that good sort yeah. of in between. And some of them tend to be tight, kind of light. And, you know, I like Provence rosés, but they are, they're a delicate flower. Yeah. This one's just got a nice structure to it. Really good so, weight. Yeah. Uh, Avionese? Avionese? Agenese. Okay, there we go. There we go. Thin Agenese. Rosé. $10.99 down to $8.99. We've got a bunch of it. Is this the type of thing it's like one and done or? Uh, no, I can get a little bit more. A little bit more. Yeah. So 2020, super fresh rosé. I would completely recommend this. Uh, you buying a case or so of this and putting it in your <laughs> in your wine rack. It's a, it's a, it will, you'll be happy all summer. Yeah. I mean, you know, whenever you need a months. bottle and it's hot out. I know. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. So that is wine number one. Now, because we had snow today and I was like, oh God, we're gonna talk about rosé and some other stuff today that just feels not exactly very uh, warm weather-like. Despite the fact that when I woke up today, it was nice and sunny, it would look great. And then I looked at my phone, I'm like, how could that possibly be? Uh, we have a pretty cool little uh, Cabernet from Chile, uh, which we have this weird, uh, for many years, we've had lots of different Cabernets in the store from Chile. And oftentimes, I won't use the words you use <laughs> earlier to describe Chilean Cabernet, but they have they have they can often have this kind of they're laced with green pepper. Yes, very very green. Yes, yeah. this is so not that uh, Clos de Fou. Yeah, Clos de Fou. Uh, four friends, 
coming from different aspects of the wine business. One was a grower, two of them actually was uh, learned to be winemakers in Burgundy. Uh, another one is uh, more into viticulture. And the four of them came together and said, we need to break the mold of what the perception of Chilean wines are about. Because if you're old enough and you remember the 70s, especially the 80s, it was all the cheap, cheap Chilean wines. Um, and they were like, we need to find like really cool, unique plots of land throughout Chile, higher altitude that really shows what uh, they can do with the type of fruit that is grown in Chile. And this one, I had the opportunity, the unique opportunity to be able to try it and buy it on a pre-offer. Um, and this literally just arrived, at, I think I ordered it two months ago. Hmm. And um, when I tried it, I was like, this is amazing. This is an incredible Cabernet for, with almost zero manipulation. I mean, there's no barrel aging on it. You said all concrete. It's and concrete and stainless steel. steel. And it has the heft and the depth and the black fruit, black currant, cassisi kind of fruit that you love in a Cabernet. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't clobber you with this like oaky bomb in the back end. I would I would never have guessed this is a Chilean Cabernet. No. If I were to if, taste it. No, more. not even remotely. No. No, it's it really has such a great purity to the cab flavor. You and know, it's I, really right on. So it's a 2015 vintage, which is old by standards that we typically see when we come to the store. It, it just all bottle aging. Yeah. I mean, so this is the... Well, and they did a very extended skin maceration time. Okay, which is like evident in the color on yeah. this thing, for yeah. sure. I think that lends partly Grios, to, what it, to what it came up. Do you know what the Grios Contoris means on the side? I think that's the actual vineyard site. Oh, is that the vineyard yeah, site? Yeah. Okay, cool. And wh where in Chile does this sit? You don't know? Val de Chacopal. Well, I don't know exactly sure where that is. Yeah, no, nor, nor am I. Huh, interesting. But yeah, no, this actually comes from the same importer as our upcoming tasting. Oh, really? Yeah, this is a Brazos. Brazos? Yeah. Oh, it's a fantastic little yeah. bottle of wine. Uh, Seventeen ninety nine is what this thing typically retails for, so a little bit off that wall price. But uh, we knocked a couple bucks off it. We just felt um, we'd gotten a bunch of it, and it was it wor worthwhile talking about a I would call it non traditional uh, Chilean Cabernet. Uh, it's I mean super interesting. I don't think you, like I said I don't think you would know it was from Chile. Actually, I wish I would have had this on Sunday because I got myself a nice piece of meat and. Did a chimichurri sauce with it. Well, that would have been smoking. Yeah, that would have been great to be invited to that. But <laughs> uh, it would be perfect for any kind of steak. And by the glass, it's pretty excellent too. So that's fifteen ninety nine off of the regular uh, seventeen ninety nine. Again, all out there and available for sale uh, at most of the brew locations. Maybe yeah. minus two of them. A couple, yeah. Right? I think that's right. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about tastings. Uh, we are going to like span the globe here over the next three or four weeks. Um, we had a op fun opportunity to talk to Francois last week uh, regarding the uh, Malé Roquefort tasting. Malé Roquefort tasting. He called it something different. I don't even recall what was it. What was, what was the language he used? It's just like this a lot of French. Oh words. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really remember exactly what it is. But it's under the umbrella of Chateau Gravelier. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, across the road from Auxonne, and yeah, uh, very French. Very French. <laughs> uh, three different wines. Uh, they're uh, Rouge and Bordeaux Blanc, and um, and then their big boy yeah. uh, Bordeaux uh, as the third bonus bottle. Um, it's a really reasonable $32 and change for the initial two bottles. Francois, you, you seem like a really cool, cool guy. Okay. I mean, you have to listen intently though. For sure. Yeah. I mean, he's got, he's got the accent, but a uh, really nice guy, uh, knows, uh, of course, a lot about the wines and the family history and all that kind of good stuff. So it should be a lot of fun. That's this Friday, seven o'clock. Um, if you're looking for something to do to kill a little bit of time. It's a, it's a nice way to spend an hour and a half or so. And then uh, the following week, we're going to travel down to Australia, our first Australian tasting. We did the Steve Bird New Zealand wine tasting a number of weeks ago. 
and this is Nugan Estate. Uh, and we actually have the privilege of getting an opportunity to co-host this with Matthew Nugan. Yeah, great third generation. Name. Third generation, great mm -hmm. first name. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and have a bunch of his wines. Actually, we have three wines in this tasting, uh, two of the three, which have actually already shown up and we're really crossing our fingers yeah. at the third. I talked to him today, <laughs> Friday, possibly afternoon, Saturday for sure, unless someone loses a but tooth or something all, like that. Right. Unless someone gets their second vaccine shot and can't make it into work today. Yeah. Uh, so we've got their... Um, Shiraz, I might be pointing to these wrong, but Shiraz and Cabernet as the base tasting pack and the Chardonnay as the third bonus bottle. Normally we wouldn't pull that white wine out as the third bottle, but since we weren't 100% certain it was actually going to show up, we figured that was yeah. the safest way to do things. And as long as we're still floating around 50 degrees, a double header on, on red wine might not be Because that's say we seem to be like, stuck. You know, I know, we, we got locked and loaded a couple of 70 degree days, but then it's just 50, 55, 55, 55. Yeah. Pretty excited about that, Florida transport. I got, I got a red butt in front of my house that I kept on thinking it was going to burst any day, and it's just like no, there it's nope, like no, I'm not going to do it. Well, today that is not going to help. Uh, thirty dollars is what these two wines cost. So I mean, for thirty bucks, you get a couple bottles of wine. You get to uh, get on the uh, Zoom experience with us, Matthew Nugan, one of the uh, as Finn said, third generation wine owners uh, down in, from Australia. And we spend a good hour, hour and a half uh, learning a bunch about Nugan, probably a lot about Australian winemaking, what's going on down there. And you have a lot of opportunity to ask questions and just learn more about wine. I mean, it is it is a fun, easy way to learn a bunch of stuff about wine. I don't know. Right. That's, that's, that's the basics. Uh, and then we we haven't really figured out this the first week in no. May, have we? Okay. We have a, we have a Friday off. But we postponed our Zorzal Argentinian wine tasting um, a couple weeks due to some circumstances beyond our control. Uh, Jumpy, the winemaker, is going to be joining us for that. That tasting is a little bit more expensive at forty-four bucks. Um, the wines, I mean, again, we kicked the white out. We did kick the white out, but we did it for yeah. kind of for a specific reason. So it's the base tasting pack, this in this case, has three different reds. Um, what do we got? Pinot, Pinot, Malbec, and then single vineyard. Malbec. Malbec. Yep. And then their Echo Bianco, which I'm actually super, Echo, sorry, not Echo, Echo uh, Bianco, which I'm really fired up to try. And they were actually the Echo Bianco, because if you ever see the concrete eggs, they're not very big. They don't produce a lot of juice. Yeah. 250 cases. Wow. Yeah. So, super small. Yeah, super small. Yeah, very Echo small for the egg that is, yeah. that is, uh, yeah, the fermenter. Yeah. The fermenter. Yeah. yeah. So again, that is the weekend of uh, March 14th, uh, that Friday. All these tastings generally are at seven o'clock unless otherwise specified. So if you haven't done one, which uh, most people that listen to the show probably have done one or one or two or even more of those, or if you you know you have any sort of interest, um, they are, they're definitely a lot of fun, definitely worth it. I look forward to you know some, some things that you have to do every single week by after a year's worth of doing them, you're kind of like, eh. But the tastings, I will have to say, I always look very forward to. The people who literally, we, we've had, we've done probably close to 50 of these at this point, yeah. maybe maybe more. Oh, more than that. More yeah. than that. And we have literally, we've been so fortunate for the guests that we've yeah. had come along with us. I mean, to arrange a winemaker to be in Madison, to do an event in a store, I mean, it's like the impossible task. 100%. And now we have winemakers every week. Yeah. So they're a lot of fun. Take part if you can. We'd love to have you, uh, have you there with us. Oh, we got? Oh, yeah. Did I, did I skip that? I did yeah, skip we, that. Yeah, that which is fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was just told before we got on air, we've got a new spirit in the stores. Uh, we have two uh, spirits from two, three from three. Charlotte. Three. Uh, <laughs> The one we decided to talk about tonight was their double oaked bourbon. Uh, yeah, this is a limited release. And from what I understand, it's priced aggressively. Yeah, the uh, the Starlight uh, Distillery uh, by the Huber family, I think it's eighth generation now, 
Um, they're 20 miles north of uh, uh, Kentucky, the Kentucky line. Border. They're, yeah, the border. They're, they're in, in they're, Indiana. Yeah, they're in Indiana. Um, but they are a winery, they're an orchard, and they're a distillery. Um, and this particular bottling is homage to Carl T. Huber. And this is a double oaked. Uh, what's kind of cool about this particular bottling and uh, kind of the blogosphere about bourbons and whiskey producers and stuff like that, this new generation, they say, keep an eye on them because they're going to really do cool stuff. This particular mash uh, is actually two separate mashes, aged for four years and then blended uh, in a new uh, 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 oak barrels from California. Hmm. And um, to marry it, the, the final uh, uh, eight months and then bottled. And I think there were five barrels so and good. two of them were sold as proprietary. You know, somebody bought the entire barrel uh, and had it bottled for their store or whatever. And so there were only three barrels left. So oh. there is not a lot of it. Um, and um, they talk about the double oak and is it over the top, whatever. Actually, the double oak has done the opposite to this one. Um, it's a really nice, rich, hearty, you know, um, it's got the vanilla notes and the butterscotchy notes, but it's just, it doesn't come off oaky and, and, and like uber spicy or anything like that. It really smoothed it out. Mm. And that might be just the California barrel there. Yeah. What was that? The, the, um, the uh, second, maybe it was even the first spirits tasting that we did, had also moved into Indiana. Remember who, who, who was that? The first one that we did. It wasn't uh, the one where we did Talisker and. Well, Journeyman was in Michigan. Was Journeyman, okay. Yeah, Journeyman's in That's Michigan. Right. Okay, maybe. Yeah, they moved my... from Chicago up to Michigan. There we go. Yeah. I have my states wrong. Yeah. Okay, Porter's wrong. Midwest, mm -hmm. also. Yeah. <laughs> maybe just so uh, for people's reference, the other Starlight products. We have the regular Starlight bourbon, and then we also have their gin. And that gin was like that specialty, you know, if you're a true gin fan, it's meant to be with tonic on the porch, lime. Yep. And it's not it's not a martini gin or something like that. It's it's meant to be with tonic. Yeah, designed for the gin yeah. tea yeah. product. Yeah, cool. So the Starlight uh, Double Oak Gin, uh, we knocked just a couple of bucks off it. We feel it was, uh, I think it's uh, typically fifty-seven ninety-nine. We dropped two, two or three bucks off. Uh, not that we felt like yeah. we really needed to do that, but just yeah. as a way to go to, on the interwebs. Yeah. We're a little under. Yeah, I, maybe you probably <laughs> at fifty-seven bucks, we're still probably 10, 10 bucks under what the yeah. market is doing with this thing. So if you're interested and have room on your bourbon shelf for another interesting bourbon, um, the Starlight might be something that you choose to. To make part of that repertoire. So let's see bourbon. Let's talk about coffee again. Again, again. Ill, ill timed. Ill timed for the weather. But. We do two different uh, coffee blends that we roast and produce for our iced coffee, um, which personally are our cold brew coffee that we uh, sell in the stores, which I personally think is just the. Uh, the bee's knees as far as cold brew coffee. Uh, in the winter, we do something called winter solstice blend, which is uh, just getting to the end of its life. In fact, there may be a couple bags here and there, but by and large, it is gone. And we are replacing with our mainstay uh, Barik's cold brew coffee blend. And that literally just, just hitting the stores um, this week. Uh, you brought over, we, you know, we try to keep the blend composition reasonably the same, but because this is, of course, being made from an agricultural product, things change. So you brought in samples of this a week or so ago, maybe yeah. a week and a half ago. And I mean, I like winter solstice, the winter solstice, but this stuff, I mean, yeah, it was it just, instantly familiar. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's it's addicting to oh, a tea. My God, it is, <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's a tough thing. Like you have to be very careful how much of it you drink because yeah. you can find yourself shaking. Two, two classes down and sitting there, you know, with uh, with the shakes. There's no doubt, no doubt. Uh, when you guys were tweaking this for this for 2021, what uh, what might have changed or what was the what, um, what were we moving around? 
just really the weight of a couple of different rows. Um, uh, just changed a few percentages just to really hit that mid palette, you know, really just richen it out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we felt that some of the heavier row stuff weighted it too far to the back, and this really puts it in the middle. Yeah, which is the mouth coating reason why yeah. I like this coffee. Yeah, it's it, it's meant to be all the way around. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's not supposed to be high and racy or or acidic or or uberly tannic or anything like that. It just has to have that nice kind of mouth feel to it. Yeah, I mean, you're like chocolate is what we're going for here. Oh yeah, I it's, mean, hundred percent. That's yeah, and then you add milk to it, then it's a milk chocolate bar. It, it is. <laughs> you throw in a scoop of ice cream on this stuff, and you are living living large. Uh, so the Briggs Cold Brew, um, probably the things that you're drinking in the store, maybe for the next three or four, five days, something like that, depending on how the weather treats us, is going to continue to be winter solstice. But the the uh, our standard uh, seasonal cold blend, cold brew blend, should be uh, being brewed and in the stores for sure by next week, I would assume. Oh, it went question. out everywhere. Okay. Yeah. So everything that everyone has is the new stuff. But we're going to do just a little. In fact, it was on. Uh, the 20th last year when we did that Pinot, when we did the Juggernaut, and when we did the same three for two deal. 420? 420, yes, back <laughs> last year. Last year. Um, when, we did, when we did the uh, three for two deal with the cold brew blend, so we're going to do it again a year later. So you get the deal is, of course, you buy two bags and you get a third for free. Or we said two, get one free. Oh, three yeah. for the price of two, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, That's we, what we call it. Three for the price of two is what the deal is. So $27 and change for the two bags versus the 43 and change for the three. It's a great deal. Uh, if, you, if you've got, if you had an opportunity to buy one of the Toddy cold brew makers, which is effectively the same thing we use in the stores, uh, and need to stock up on your good old cold brew, this is the time to do it. Because mm -hmm. we probably won't do many of these uh, again, more than likely. I don't know. I'm pretty fired up. This stuff is back. I don't even know. If it's like the, the winter solstice we have um, listed as medium roast. It just is less weight to the palate yeah. for that coffee. We may have to go back and I think rework that a little bit. Give it. When I think winter, I think of like again a little fuller, a little maybe more spicy. You know what I mean? Like something. Oh yeah, we need to make more of a spice mix. I, I think or maybe a holiday cold brew. Something like that. So it gives it a little chicory. Little, no, not chicory. <laughs> not chicory, Finn. Um, but something that just yeah. like a little, little more interesting. I would, I would, I feel like would need. All right, last one on the evening. The um, Mighty Peace Samoja, um, which is a fair trade organic coffee that we um, have brought in for the second time. Uh, with uh, from the folks from Mighty Peace Coffee. We talked a little bit about the story last week, but these guys have basically developed a really great pipeline of super high quality specialty coffee from the Congo uh, into specialty coffee markets within the United States and elsewhere. Um, and they've done so all while basically this, this coffee that's being grown and processed in, uh, in country is greatly benefiting uh, the population of people there that are have been really sort of tormented by war and lots of bad stuff. Uh, in particular, um, uh, women down there are a huge part of this sort of coffee supply chain in country. And as we said, getting coffee out of the Congo is exceedingly Challenging. exceedingly difficult, yeah. and especially quality coffee. There's been several large multinational coffee yeah. producers that basically just stopped trying. Yeah, this comes from what they call the Great Lakes part of Congo. Yep, and Congo actually touches the Atlantic, mm -hmm. but that's not where they go to. <laughs> they go the other way up towards Kenya to get to get it out of the country. Yeah, and it's I, the safe route to go. Yeah, and an incredible journey to get both from the processing plants to uh, where they can actually ship it and get it out to places like us. Uh, and this, it's very different than last year's Emojo. Oh, it is. It really. Uh, I think Aaron even said it this morning. Just like this is really a specialty coffee. It doesn't. It tastes different than, you know, yeah. a lot of the other coffees that are out there. For sure. And I feel kind of like uh, it will hold up. 
a, a little bit longer, you know, in terms of its, we'll, we'll find out because it literally just sort of came in. Um, but I kind of have a feeling it just is going to maintain quality for a little bit longer period. Oh, yeah. It, it really maintains a great focus. Yeah. And really, it's just kind of, it, it's really tight. So uh, we rolled out the coffee last week and finally uh, hit the stores. You should start seeing it being brewed in the store. But this is the only item, I believe, that uh, you may be, excuse me, be able to buy single bags of this through uh, the BriggsMarket.com website under the CWT April 21st show section. But if you go out and download the Bariks Plus app, so uh, you can just search for Bariks Plus on uh, the Google Play or the Apple um, App Store, our app ordering online ordering app is there. Um, you can place orders for your favorite coffee drinks and all that kind of good stuff. And in the whole bean section, we have we have three coffees or so that we keep there on a regular basis. I opened our Motor Mocha, maybe Smoke Jumper or North Beach. I can't even really remember. Probably North Beach. Probably North Beach. <laughs> but we threw in the Congo just for like three or four days, and it's literally a buy one, get one deal. So this is not an inexpensive coffee, but it's our most expensive coffee. It is our most by far. Yes. Well, by far. As cost, yeah, it's and cost, yet it's, yeah. it does it's yeah. it's priced similarly. We just sort of yeah. take it on the margin. We're going to really take it on the margin on this one because yeah. uh, it's buy one get one. I said through September twenty fourth. I mean April twenty fourth. <laughs> Whoa! I have a day problem. There is yeah. there's a calendar that is wrong in my brain. April twenty fourth. So Saturday, April twenty fourth. I'll probably pull it down. So you can just go out there. Uh, set it, uh, order your latte or whatever, and grab a couple bags of beans. And if you order that twenty-seven dollar and change, or no, that seventeen ninety-five dollar, seventeen ninety-five and change uh, item, you will get two bags of coffee instead of one. So hopefully, it says that in the direction. So that's a pretty good deal. I don't know. That's, awesome. a, that's <laughs> a pretty small deal. That's a pretty small deal. Clearly, an incentive to go out and use the Bruce app. Lots of people. Uh, I mean, we're in the thousands of downloads for that thing, and lots of people are using it to uh, pre-order their uh, coffee and food and stuff like that in cafes. Uh, yeah, yeah, you should come work a Saturday morning. It's pop and pay all over the place. <laughs> it's like app, app purchase, app purchase, app purchase. People are, yeah. that is not going away. There's clearly one piece to this whole thing that is not going away. Yeah, they have a, yeah when, it, when an entire group is at a workout and they're all going to come over, and they're all saying, I want it at, you know, 7.47 and 7.51. And you're <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, yeah. I mean, I, who's I, on first. I haven't actually walked into a place like Pizza Bruto or called a place like Pizza Bruto as one example in eight months since they got their app working. It's just a convenient way to do things. Yeah. Okay, so that is the show. We've got a little rosé. We've got a little bit of... Uh, Chilean Cabernet that you definitely want to take advantage of. French, Australian, and uh, Argentina. Argentinian wine tastings coming up. Little uh, new uh, set of bourbons and a gin that should be in anybody's GNT tool bag. And then a couple of coffees. Of course, the cold brew. We'll definitely talk about that probably a few other times as we go through, and it finally really gets to be cold brew season. A three for two is a pretty rocking deal. And the uh, Mighty Piece of Moja. Uh, fair trade and organic coffee that we've got out there. Download the Breaks app. Uh, you will see it under the whole bean section. And uh, for uh, 17 bucks and change, you can get two bags of the Emoja. You'll you'll enjoy it. It's a uh, fun, uh, lightly roasted uh, coffee of ours that won't be around for forever. Yeah, and it's, as I explained last week, it's very, very fresh. And uh, as a roaster and trying to roast this coffee, you really have to push it. I mean, it's it's it it's dense. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's really it's a it's a great bean. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, everyone. We will see you guys uh, next Friday. Thanks very much for joining us. Woo! Uh, and thanks very much for all your support. Hope you guys all have a great rest of your week and go away, Mr. Snow. Hopefully, we'll see you Friday night. Friday night. There we go. Yeah. A little French. A little French. Yeah, we know.